My grandfather's clock was too large for the shelf, so it stood ninety years on the floor. It was taller by half than the old man himself, though it weighed not a penny weight more. It was bought on the morn of the day that he was born. It was always his treasure and pride. But it stopped short, never to go again when the old spring died. Ninety years without slumbering, tick tock, tick tock, his life seconds numbering, tick tock, tick tock. But it stopped short, never to go again when the old spring died. My grandfather said that of those he could hire, not a servant so faithfully found. For it wasted no time and had but one desire at the close of each week to be wound. And then it kept in its place, not a frown upon its face, and its hands never hung by its side. But it stopped short, never to go again when the old spring died. Ninety years without slumbering, tick tock, tick tock, his life seconds numbering, tick tock, tick tock, but it stopped short, never to go again when the old spring died. Watching its pendulum swing to and fro, many hours had he spent as a boy. And in childhood and manhood, the clock seemed to know how to share both his grief and his joy. So it struck twenty-four when he entered at the door with a blooming and beautiful bride. But it stopped. Short, never to go again when the old spring died. Ninety years without slumbering, tick tock, tick tock, his life seconds numbering, tick tock, tick tock, but it stopped. Short, never to go again when the old spring And along in the dead of the night, and along that for years had been dumb. And we knew that his spirit was blooming for flight, that his hour of departure had come. Still the clock kept the time with a soft and muffled chime, as we silently stood by his side. But it stopped. Never to go again when the old man died. Ninety years without slumbering, tick tock, tick tock, his life seconds slumbering, tick tock, tick tock, but it's short, short. Never to go again when the old man died.